Hey everyone, Angry Honey Badger here, and in this video we'll be taking a look at Rumble. We'll start off with his abilities and what order you'll want to max those out in, then we'll go over his runes and his masteries followed by counters to look out for and what champions he does well against along with team synergies. Finally, we'll talk about the items you'll want to consider purchasing while playing Rumble, and we'll look at his pros and cons. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you find it helpful, but for now, let's take a look at Rumble, the Mechanized Menace. Go, Rumble Badger. As for Rumble's abilities, let's start off with his passive, Junkyard Titan. Every spell Rumble casts gives him heat. When he reaches 50% heat, he reaches Danger Zone, granting all of his basic abilities bonus effects. When he reaches 100% heat, he begins to overheat, granting his basic attacks bonus range, but making him unable to cast spells for a few seconds. As for your first ability you'll put a point in and max out first, this will be your Flame Spitter. Rumble torches opponents in front of him, dealing magic damage in a cone for 3 seconds. While in the Danger Zone, this damage is increased by 50%. At level 2, you'll put a point into your Electro Harpoon and max this out second. Rumble launches a taser, electrocuting his target with magic damage and slowing their movement speed. A second shot can be fired within 3 seconds. While in Danger Zone, the damage and the slow percentage is increased by 50%, and after using this ability you may cast a second time at no cost. And at level 3, you'll put a point into your Scrap Shield and you'll max this out last. Rumble pulls up a shield, protecting him from danger and granting him a quick burst of movement speed. While in Danger Zone, he gets a 50% increase in shield health and movement speed. And finally, we have his ultimate, the Equalizer, which has no cost. Rumble fires off a group of rockets, creating a wall of flames that damages and slows enemies while they stand on it. As for his rune page, I recommend Magic Penetration Marks, Armor Seals, Magic Resist Glyphs, and Ability Power Quintessences. And for his masteries, you'll want 21 in the offense and 9 in the defense. Here's the page I recommend using. As for champions that counter Rumble, first is Yorick. Rumble lacks sustain that Yorick has with his spammable ghouls, and the spamming of ghouls can cause Rumble to overheat when he uses his abilities either to deal with the ghouls or to block out their damage with his scrap shield. Next is Riven. Whenever Rumble misses his harpoons, Riven can full combo aggress, which will typically send Rumble off running and taking a lot of damage. Also, when he retreats against any champion, his flame spitter is no longer a threat and further punishment can be applied. And finally is Sinshao. His ability to gap, close, knock up, and shred armor has him punishing Rumble in the lane, and can cause multiple early recalls, which can force Rumble to fall behind in farm and on early items, which overall delays his mid-game power spike greatly. As for matchups that favor Rumble, let's start out with Malphite. His Q harass can be negated with the Scrap Shield, and outside of that damage he won't effectively trade in lane. Next is Akali. Simply put, you can out-harass her in the laning phase, and as her magic damage ramps up in the mid-game, so will yours, and you'll easily build an Abyssal early to shut her down further. Finally is Teemo. Teemo actually has the advantage in the first couple levels, but once you have all three abilities, you can start to burn him down. Teemo's blind also has little to no effect on Rumble, since his power is within his abilities and not his auto attacks. As for champions that synergize well with Rumble, those include Sona, Jarvan, Sejuani, Amumu, and Orianna. Teammates with Lockdown make it easy for Rumble to land pivotal mid-game equalizers that can make for quick teamfights and an early lead. Try following up initiations from your teammates rather than starting fights with Rumble unless they are corralling down a narrow lane. As for the items you want to build when you're playing Rumble, I highly recommend starting with the Cloth, Armor, and Health pots early on, as typically you'll be going up against attack damage top laners. If this isn't the case, or you feel like you don't need all those Health pots in the Cloth Armor early, a Doran Shield is another viable way to start, giving you the health and the regeneration, and you can also bring one Health Pot. Be sure to bring your Warding Totem as well. Early on though, the first three items I typically start to build will become a Seeger's Arm Guard, a Sorcerer's Shoes, and a Haunting Guise. All three of them are very important, the one giving you the armor and ability power with Seekers, very helpful as you'll typically always be picking up Azonia's Hourglass for team fighting. The penetration in the boots and movement speed is also very important for dealing damage early on, and penetration overall on Rumble is a great thing, which is why we also pick up the Haunting Guise, giving us even more ability power, actually some health, which is pretty helpful in lane, and more magic penetration. If you happen to be going up against an AP top laner, you'll probably want to rush an Abyssal Scepter before all three of those items though. The Abyssal will make it so you get a good amount of ability power and a good amount of magic resist, which will keep you in lane longer, dealing more damage, and resisting longer, typically favoring you in longer extended trades. 
As for the full core build though, after we pick up the hourglass, we have our boots and we finish off the haunting guys into a Leandri's Torment, we'll typically then focus out on a Void Staff to maximize the magic penetration that we have against our targets, and then we'll build things up with maximum damage by picking up a Rabadun's Death Cap. This will just increase all damage across the board completely. Then as for a final item, if we didn't go for the Abyssal Scepter, because we were against an attack damage top lane, we'd go with the Rhyolized Crystal Scepter, granting us even more health, more ability power, and creating us just a massive slow field with everything we deal for damage. As for one optional item you could do, but I still don't really recommend, it would be the Will of the Ancients early. You can get some sustain off of this in lane if you really are worried about getting poked down, and you will get some cooldown reduction, but besides that, it doesn't really bring you enough of anything else to make it a really viable or core item. Moving on to his pros and cons, let's start off with his pros. With Heat as your resource, you control how much damage you can actually deal. He's surprisingly tanky for the amount of damage he deals. Very strong slows are built into his kit, which is very helpful. Spammable spells scare off lane opponents. He has the best mid-game ultimate for teamfighting. As for his cons, his melee attack range is terrible and his animation for last hitting is awful. He has to be fairly close in range to deal meaningful damage in a fight. He is very item dependent. Can be punished for over pushing, which he does often with Flame Spitter. It takes a good amount of time to learn him really well. And as for my personal thoughts on Rumble, I really do like Rumble as a champion, and like I said in his pros, I think he actually has the best mid-game ultimate for team fighting. It is probably one of the most pivotal when landed or not landed in a team fight. He can just half-life a team with it if the rest of his team just happens to stun everybody on it, or if they just happen to all stand on it. It's just such a game-controlling ultimate. Um, and game changing ultimate overall. I just, it's just one of the best ones in the game. But besides that, like I said, he's not the easiest to learn and he's not the easiest to lane sometimes. Sometimes you'll get a good matchup where you can just harass and you can farm easily. But if you're getting punished for CSing or if you're just not the best with CSing with Rumble, you're gonna actually probably have a fairly hard time. Like I said, his uh, attack animation for CS is, is just, honestly, it's terrible. And missing CS is gonna happen. Um, and Flame Spitter deals less damage to creeps than it does to champions, so you can't just effectively farm whole waves by just flame spittering them constantly. You will miss out on CSing. So he definitely has his little tweaks and you really need to be like hyper aware of everything going on when it comes to just CSing correctly, not over harassing, not over extending, not overheating too often because you'll just get harassed and punished for all those things. So all the little things about Rumble is what makes him slightly more difficult to learn and to play. Other than that, he can deal a lot of damage. He can get fairly tanky. He can be a very good team fighter. And even if you fall behind a little bit early, which does slow down his mid game power spike, he still eventually reaches a good power level in the late game. Probably not as extreme as some champions, but he still seems to do fairly well as the game continues. And if he does get ahead early, he can not only help himself snowball, but he can help a whole team snowball with pivotal ultimates. I hope you found the video helpful. I wish you the best of luck on Summoner's Rift, and I'll see all of you in the next build video.